Hello everyone and happy new year. My name is Zoe and in today's video I'm going to be going over every single book that I read in 2022. So I got back into reading back in June and since then I believe I read a total of 62 books. So to ensure that this video is not insanely long I'm going to challenge myself to review each book in only one sentence. I've seen a bunch of other booktubers do this so I thought that I would give it a try and We'll see how it goes. So the first book that I read was The Last Mrs. Parish by Liv Constantine. This is a thriller that was recommended to me by a friend and I honestly forgot that I even read this other than the fact that it was just so painful to get through. This is also the longest book that I read in 2022 so I'm not sure why I didn't just DNF it but one star. Next I read People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. You guys know that I loved this book because I literally cannot stop talking about it. It is the book that made me fall back in love with reading so I think that it'll always hold a special place in my heart and Alex Nielsen is the blueprint of book boyfriends for me so five stars. And then immediately after I read Beach Read, another one of my favorite romances this year solely due to the amazing banter. It had everything that I could have asked for, great characters, great chemistry, and explored deeper topics outside of just the romance. So 4.75 stars. Next we have Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So it's about a famous family who hosts the biggest party of the year in Malibu. There's a bunch of scandals and drama and this book really solidified my love for her writing. Four stars. We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. Unfortunately, this book did not live up to the hype for me. It was quick and forgettable with one-dimensional characters and a predictable plot twist. Two stars. The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. This is basically a self-help book disguised as fiction. An interesting premise, but I do think that it could have gone way more in-depth around the topic of mental health, so three stars. It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. So I will say, originally when I read this, I did enjoy it solely because of Atlas, but you know, it was at the beginning of my whole reading journey, so I didn't really have much to compare it to, but in hindsight, it's 2023 now, and my taste has definitely evolved. I'd say that this book is like a two or three to me now. It was a heartbreaking story, but definitely cringy and somewhat problematic, so 2.5 stars. Okay, so moving on into July, I read all three of Mary H.K. Choi's books. The first one was Emergency Contact, and I liked that this book talked a lot about mental health, although I don't really remember much else about the book. I do remember that the pacing was painfully, painfully slow, but I must have still enjoyed it because I gave it 3.5 stars. Next, we have Yelp. I don't know why that word always sounds weird to me. Anyways, we follow our main character, Jane, as she's navigating her messy 20s in New York City until her life is completely shaken when her seemingly perfect sister is diagnosed with cancer. The story was profoundly honest and raw in its representation of mental health and eating disorders, and although it was sad, I did enjoy it four stars. The last book of hers that I read was Permanent Record. This is more of a coming of age story versus a romance and even though this was my least favorite book of hers, I will say she does such a great job at telling such complex multi-layered stories. Like all of her characters are morally gray and complicated and it just makes them seem a lot more unfiltered with genuine emotions. Three stars. The Roughest Draft by Emily Wibberly and Austin Sigmund Broca. So this is often compared to Beach Read because it's two authors stuck in a beach house setting, enemies to lovers. And while this was enjoyable, I don't know, there's just something missing in their chemistry. 3.75 stars. Summer Broken Rules by Kale Walther. The perfect quick summer read with immaculate vibes. Five stars. The Summer I Turned Pretty series by Jenny Hawn. I read this purely for the childhood nostalgia, but unfortunately, rereading this as an adult definitely did not quite hit the same. I also wanted to reread these because of the TV show that came out, but did I end up watching it? No. Altogether, I'd give the series 3.75 stars. Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. The perfect summer romance that made me feel like a teenager falling in love for the first time. A lot of people like to hate on this book because they say it's basically love in other words but in a different font, which 
it kind of is but i hadn't read it so i was able to go into this blind and i just absolutely fell in love with it the plot twist did hurt my feelings though but regardless five stars moving into august i read where the crawdads sing by delia owens because i wanted to watch the movie but unfortunately i just don't think that this book was for me i found the beginning pretty slow and boring so three stars it happened one summer by tessa bailey i just needed to know what all the hype was about but it was okay it felt very hallmarky and underwhelming 2.75 stars and even though i didn't enjoy the first book i did read its companion novel hook line and sinker because what can i say i'm a sucker for the friends to lovers trope i definitely liked this more than the first book it had the perfect mix of humor tension witty banter 3.75 stars reminders of him by colleen hoover i buddy read this with a few of my friends and while it was less cringy than it ends with us i still didn't particularly enjoy it two stars the guest list by lucy foley a classic murder mystery that takes place at a wedding yet i found the pacing to be incredibly slow and the plot twist was predictable two stars then i started september reading one of us is lying by karen m mcmanus this is a young adult murder mystery it takes place in high school when the student who runs the school's like gossip app suddenly dies in detention and we follow the four main characters who are also the prime suspects to be honest this book was pretty mid and again i predicted the plot twist three stars next i read the first two books in the inheritance games trilogy by jennifer lynn barnes the perfect ya mystery series with an amazing plot puzzles and riddles secret passageways a romance subplot and you also get the like dark academia feels 4.5 stars and magnolia parks by jessa hastings this book is low-key the trash but I enjoyed it more than I was expecting to. And let me just say, this is not a romance, just pure escapism into their world of high society London and all the drama and entertainment that comes with it. 3.75 stars. And then I read the next book in the series, Daisy Hates, which follows three other characters in that whole universe. And surprisingly, I liked this one more than the first book, but in general, reading these books, it's like watching reality TV. It's a bit trashy, it's fun, it's sensationalist, and you can just blitz right through them. Four stars. The Final Gambit by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, the finale to the Inheritance Games trilogy, but sadly, it just did not hit the same as the first two books there was also a bit of character assassination which i was not a fan of so i gave this a 3.5 but all in all i still really enjoyed the series and i would give the series like or 4.5 altogether. Accidentally Amy by Lynn Painter. So I read this on Kindle Unlimited because I was in the mood for a cozy fall read and I'd also heard good things about the author but wow this was so cheesy and forgettable. Two stars. How We Fell Apart by Katie Zhao. This book is basically one of us is lying meets pretty little liars but make it Asian. It had so much potential to be this dark academia mystery thriller set in a highly competitive elite school. Oh, sounds so amazing but alas I was disappointed three stars. And then at the beginning of October, I read Full Tilt by Emma Scott. This is Right Person, Not Enough Time, which is just the saddest trope ever. And I did know this going into it, but um, I like to find joy and misery. And this was absolutely heartbreaking and I loved it four stars and then because i was feeling so empty inside i immediately read the sequel all in and i surprisingly loved it even more than the first book which i didn't think that would be possible i think i originally rated this 4.5 stars but to be honest i don't really remember what happened nor do i ever really think about this book so do what you will with that information <laughs> next i binged the entire off campus and briar U series Yes, I did do that. October was an interesting month for me mentally. <laughs> I remember I was sick in bed with a fever of 102 and these books are very Wattpad-y so they're really easy to read even with my 
zero brain cell capacity at the time the thing with these books is that they are so bad yet so good at the same time like i don't even know how to explain it but the girls who get it get it i'm just gonna group the entire series together as a whole because i honestly could not tell you what happens in each book they're more or less the same story told over and over just with different tropes and apparently i just ate that shit up <laughs> i think my favorites would have to be the deal the score and the play but what made the first book really stand out to me was the whole trauma bonding and healing process the two main characters went through it was surprisingly beautiful and i was able to relate to both characters so it just hit in a way that i was not expecting it to the very secret society of irregular witches by sangu mandana a cozy and wholesome story about magic friendship and love and reading this felt like a warm hug four stars okay my camera died so the angle might be a bit different but Going into November, I was craving a dark academia fantasy read, so I picked up The Atlas Six by Olive Blake, a fun, pretentious book with magical realism and morally gray characters, and I loved each and every one of them. 4.5 stars. Tokyo Ever After by Amiko G. This is Princess Diaries meets Crazy Rich Asians with a forbidden bodyguard romance. A heartwarming fairy tale story rich in Japanese culture, family dynamics, and the exploration of identity and race. 4.75 stars. And then I reread Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. It's melancholic and has a dystopian element to it that I can't talk about because it would be a spoiler, but I highly recommend. Four stars. I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. Amazing, show-stopping, incredible. Need I say more? This has got to be the best memoir that I've ever read, truly because of her amazing storytelling and humor, and the audiobook is just... 5 stars. Tokyo Dreaming by Amiko Jean. This is the sequel to Tokyo Ever After, and reading this taught me that not every book needs a sequel. While I did find some parts endearing, I low-key just wished I never read this book because it kind of ruined my favorite character for me, so 3.5 stars. Happy Hour by Marla Granados. <sighs> this book is the epitome of sitting outside with your best friend with a bottle of wine and just chit-chatting about your latest adventures. A must-read for anyone in their 20s. 4.5 stars. The Atlas Paradox by Olive Blake. This book had so much potential after The Atlas Six, but unfortunately it fell short and gave major second book syndrome. I truly had no idea what was going on because literally nothing happened until the last like few chapters and this book is 400 pages. But you know, I probably will still end up reading the last book when it comes out because I just want to know how it ends. 2.5 stars. Next, I read Twisted Love by Anna Huang because I always see people raving about this and I had FOMO. But unfortunately, I did not like it. I know, I'm sorry, I really tried, but I just didn't really care about the characters' backstories and I kind of found Alex to be toxic, so two stars. My Body by Emily Ratajkowski. Going into this, I didn't really know too much about her other than the fact that she's this insanely gorgeous model with a swimsuit line, but wow. I was thoroughly impressed and thought-provoked while reading this. It's broken down into different essays where she talks about patriarchy, the empowerment, the objectification of women in such a brave and painfully honest way. Four stars. Alrighty, so I took a quick break because my stomach was making so much noise and then the sun went down, but it's okay. We are just going to keep chugging along. I promise we're almost done. Twisted Games by Anna Huang. And all I have written in my notes is, I liked this more than Twisted Love, but I'm not sure if Anna Huang books are for me. Three stars. Next, I read Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. She really knows how to tell a story with her sharp and witty writing. However, this did fall a bit flat for me compared to her other books. 
three stars. These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong, a fantastic Romeo and Juliet retelling based in 1920s Shanghai. It has a bit of magical realism, a strong female lead, and a great representation four stars. And then as soon as I finished the first book, I ran to read the next one. Well, I didn't really run because I already owned the book and I just read it in bed. But I immediately devoured it and it was even better than the first. It was so captivating right from the beginning and this book just tore my heart apart. But like in the best way possible. Five stars. There's also a Christmas novella which I read immediately after finishing Our Violent Ends and it was the perfect serotonin boost that I needed and I'm pretty sure I rated it five stars. Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner. This was so beautifully written and as someone who struggles with their own cultural identity and has also lost a loved one to illness, this memoir really spoke volumes to me. Like, I felt so emotionally wrecked, but also seen and validated when I finished this book. 4.5 stars. Love Life Farms by BK Borison. So I was feeling in the holly jolly mood so I picked this up on Kindle Unlimited because it's friends to lovers and fake dating so I thought that I was going to like it but no. I realized I only like friends to lovers when it's done right. It really lacked emotional development from the platonic to romantic feelings and just overall the pacing felt really slow and boring and I honestly wanted to DNF it. Two stars. Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. It's a thriller about a couple who goes on a weekend getaway to save their marriage and the husband has facial blindness so he can't recognize people's faces. Overall, it was a pretty decent thriller but I'm just realizing that I don't think this genre is for me personally. Three stars. Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. I think this book perfectly encapsulates what it feels like to fall in love with another human for the first time and all the complicated and angsty feelings that come with it. I loved that they were nerds and bonded over books and words. Honestly, this book was giving five star energy until I got to the reveal. I already talked about it in my last video, so I'm not gonna repeat myself here, but basically I was just really disappointed at how this book handled the topic of SA. There was a lot to unpack and it just felt rushed and overlooked. And for that reason, I really don't know how to read this book. It starts with us by Colleen Hoover. I honestly did not see the point to this book. One star. We Were Dreamers by Simu Liu. An endearing memoir, but it didn't really stand out compared to the other ones that I read. Three stars. And the last book that I read was The Mountain Is You by Brianna Wyest. I'm so sorry. Reading this book felt like a therapy session that I didn't know I needed. And if you think you're someone who struggles with self sabotaging behaviors, I highly recommend it. Four stars. And there we have it. Those were all the books that I read in 2022. I hope you were able to find some book recommendations from it. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying the book content and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye. Thank you.